blessed Sunday, everyone. Welcome to ICS Church. ICS Church is for everyone, everywhere. And it is our mission to love, disciple, and send. So if this is your first time to join our service, I am Sam, one of the pastors of ICS Church. So I pray that you will be blessed with our worship celebration today. So come and join us as we worship the Lord with friends leading us. God bless. I invite you to put your praise on as we sing worship songs to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says the time will come that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is indeed our Lord.
battle. It is your battle. Whatever giants we have in front of us, Father, all we need to do is to be still and use whatever we have in our hands and whatever is lacking, Father, you would fill. Lord, just submit our lives to you, God. Our hearts, our minds, our hands, our feet, Father. Use them for your battle. Anoint them, God. Anoint them, God. Because everything right in front of us, Father, they may be very intimidating. They may be very overwhelming. But you are before us. You are behind us, Lord God. You are surrounding us. And you're going to fight for us. And because you are with us, Father, that is a sure victory over our lives, over our families, over our churches, over our businesses, over our loved ones, Father. Our victory is in you, God. In all of these things, Father, we don't want to leave any glory to ourselves, but all the glory, every single bit of glory belongs to you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Indeed, we are victorious in Jesus. Praise Jesus for his presence that is before us. So assuring us of his victory. So let us continue to worship and honor God with our worship through giving so in behalf of the church leadership thank you so much for your generosity in spite of the crisis that we are facing you keep on extending your financial support donations offerings you know you are giving joyfully and giving more than what is expected so i remember acts chapter 4 when god poured out his spirit upon upon them one of the amazing things that happened or one of the marks of revival is the generosity of the believers in Acts chapter 2 verse 32. It says, all believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. So church, it happened again. Where? Here in ICS Church. So if you are a visitor, it is not mandatory to give. But if the Spirit is touching your heart, I pray that you will give with a joyful joyful heart and God bless you as you give. Thank you so much and be blessed always. Good day, everyone. Welcome once again for joining us today at ICS Church. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for taking time to tune in. My name is Chad. I am one of the pastors here at the church. We are broadcasting from Metro Manila, Philippines. So wherever you are in the world, if you're catching this today, we're glad that you've come to spend this few minutes with us. Now, if you're in Metro Manila, we are broadcasting. We're recording the service on Thursday. There was supposed to be a storm that came in on Friday, so I hope today, wherever you are, that you are safe. If you are in need of any help, please let us know. Get in touch with us, and uh, we will do what we can to bring assistance to you. But let's get into the Word right now. The title of the message today is, Is This the End? A discussion with Jesus while on the Mount of Olives. You know, one of the most frustrating things that we can experience, um, I'm sure in this time, in this season, if, if you're here in the Philippines or around the world and you're in lockdown, or as we call it here in Metro Manila, uh, ECQ. Uh, what is ECQ? Enhanced Community Quarantine. Man, I forgot already. It's nearly two months. Enhanced Community Quarantine, but it's like a lockdown. Um, if you remember at the beginning of this, uh, everybody was glued to the news because we all wanted to know what the information was. 
what the virus is all about, how could we catch it, how could we prevent ourselves from getting it, and then what are the restrictions? Can we go out? Should we stay at home? What should we do? And uh, because of that, there's a lot of information that came out. It's important to always go to the source. And so the Department of Health here in the Philippines said, because of a lot of fake news, just get the source directly from us or the main news outlets. And because of this, when we were informed, uh, we knew what to do. Somehow, the fears, the anxiety was assailed. There was peace because we knew that when we go out, we need to be wearing protective gear. We need to put on our masks. We need to be sure that we don't touch our eyes, our face. And uh, when we return home from coming outside, we're to wash our hands well, take a shower, and wash our clothes right away to eliminate uh, contamination from this virus. Knowing this information helps bring peace and help us know what to do in this particular season. How we respond to what we know and unknown influences how we live. That's just a reality and a truth. And when it comes to Jesus' return, there are things we know for sure and things we don't know for sure. It affects how we follow Jesus as well. This same idea and truth applies when it comes to the soon return of Jesus. Have you thought about that this past couple of weeks? Have you thought about, hey, is this an indicator that Jesus is coming soon? Has somebody asked that question to you as a follower of Jesus? Or have you asked that question to somebody? If that's you, would you comment below? Would you uh, click the thumbs up and say, yeah, that's me. That's me. I've asked that question before. So today we're going to talk a little bit about this because Jesus has actually some things to say about this, right? We're not just going to sit down and wonder, hey, is, is Jesus coming soon? Are there indicators? Are there signs? There are actually things that Jesus mentioned in scriptures that will help us know this because by knowing these things, it will influence how we live. When we know what we know and don't know about Jesus' return influences how we live. It does affect how we live. So again, we can't go directly to the primary source, which is Jesus, right? Because he is now ascended into heaven. He is sitting on the right hand throne of God, interceding for us. We can pray to him, but you know, sometimes we don't directly get a response in terms of an audible voice. So we, we're going to go to the second hand source. The second hand source are the people and the individuals that were with Jesus when he was here on earth. And they were, they're called disciples. These were the people that followed Jesus, sat with Jesus, had a conversation, uh, discussions with Jesus when he was on earth. And some of them wrote down the things that they heard Jesus teach and talk about. One of these guys, his name is Matthew. He was a Jewish government official. Specifically, he collected taxes for the Roman Empire. And he wrote down his own biographical account of the time he spent with Jesus. And so we're going to go straight into his account in Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 3. It says here, later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. So Jesus had been teaching that day and preaching, and he sat down just to take a rest. His disciples saw this an opportunity. They came to him privately and said, tell us when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? At this point, Jesus had been teaching and telling his disciples indicators and, and signs that will show his soon return. And so just like maybe some of us who have been Christians for a while, you know, some of us want to know exact the exact date. When will Jesus really return? Just so that I could be ready, right? Just so that I could be ready. There are actually people who love predicting. There are Christians who try to predict the exact date and time of Jesus' return. This has happened for years, you know, even previous years. And up to now, there are people who are still wanting to do that. Well, Jesus, again, has something to say about this. So Jesus replies to them in verse 4. And he says, don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming i am the messiah but they will deceive many so he, he starts off by saying okay be careful because they're going to be false saviors and false messiahs they're going to become who will say i am jesus who has come back don't believe them don't believe them because there are signs that will follow you will hear of wars 
and threats of wars, but don't panic. So again, first century, he was anticipating this, that wars have always been happening throughout history, even before Jesus came. And he's saying those wars will continue even as I am no longer physically present. And are they happening now? Yes, they are. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. So there is a time lag, he's saying. There's a time lag. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. These are just early indicators of my return. These are the early signs of my return. Now, at this point, it's kind of bad news. These are all negative news. And so Jesus, what does he do? He adds on more negative news. <laughs> he says, then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. I'm sure at this point, the disciples were not clapping their hands or shouting, hooray, yes, we're looking forward to this. No, I mean, they're probably like, really? This is going to happen? We're going to be arrested? We're going to be persecuted? We're going to be killed? You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. Well, hold on. Weren't they just in, in around Jerusalem at this time? Yes, they were. Right now, it's the first century, and they were still in Jerusalem. So at this point, Jesus is actually predicting the future. Jesus is prophesying because um, after Jesus ascends into heaven, the gospel goes out. You know, Acts chapter 2 takes place, and the gospel, the good news, goes beyond Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth the reason right now where we are where we are is because the gospel reached us and millions of people have become followers of jesus all around the world so he's saying around the world you're going to be hated because there are going to be followers all around the world as well many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other even in the family of faith man there are going to be issues there are going to be conflicts there's going to be betrayal many false prophets these are false teachers false preachers will appear and deceive many people sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold if you think it's bad right now jesus is saying man it's gonna get even worse but the one finally we get some good news but the one who endures to the end will be saved. I'm sure at this point, they're probably taking a deep breath and saying, okay, I thought it was going to get worse, but thank God there's good news. There is salvation for those who endure. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world. Hey, that has happened and continues to happen. Again, that's a prophetic statement that Jesus makes so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come. So, in those few words, Jesus is able to respond to them and tell them, hey, you want to know when I'm going to return? Here it is. Here are the signs. Here are the indicators. So let's summarize some of these points that Jesus mentioned. What do we know for sure about Jesus' return? We know for sure that there's going to be religious deception. There are going to be pretenders. There are going to be savior, uh, messiah pretenders who will come. And they have come. Ever since Jesus ascended, there have been several who have come or pretended to be Jesus. And so we need to be aware of those things. There is an increase of armed conflicts and natural disasters. So from the time of Jesus up to the present time, has this increased? Yes, it has. Both political wars and natural disasters around the world. These have continued to increase. What do we know for sure? There is an increase of uh, persecution of Christians around the world. Again, because there are many Christians around the world, there is also an increase of persecution towards these Christians. But one of the interesting things is it's not happening in all countries where there are Christians. So that may be an indicator that it might not be as soon as we think, because he says it is going to increase towards all Christians. There is going to be a decreasing of love and compassion, both within the family of faith and just the world in general. Finally, um, he says, what we know for sure, there's going to be effective evangelism. That's good news. 
The gospel is going to be preached. The kingdom uh, of God's message will be shared around the world and people will turn towards Jesus. Good news. Uh, those who endure to the end will be saved. That's good news. When the good news is preached to all nations, then the end will come. That's the indicator. What we know and don't know about Jesus' return influences how we live. So what should we do? Knowing these things today as followers of Jesus, or if you're not a follower of Jesus, now you know that Christians around the world actually believe in these indicators. How are we to respond to these things? So a few verses later, Jesus answers that as well. And in verse 42, here's what Jesus says. So you too must keep watch. For you don't know what day your Lord is coming. So for those of us who are wanting to predict the date and the time, there it is. Jesus' words himself. He says, you know, you're not going to know the date or the exact time the Lord is coming. So what do we do? We need to keep watch. And then he illustrates, how are we to keep watch? Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. No, he's not going to do that. You also must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. So the illustration that Jesus uses is just like a thief. Hey, how many of you have ever had stuff stolen from you, right? Did they make an appointment? Did they say, hey, uh, I'm going to come into your house later on, all right? So make sure that your door is unlocked. Make sure that the window is open so that I just come in and steal what I want and I'll be out of there and I won't even touch you. No thief does that, right? I mean, that's crazy, a thief making an appointment. And so Jesus is saying, when a burglar comes, it's it's the same thing. When Jesus returns, it's, it's going to be like that. Not that he's going to be a burglar, but that he is going to come unannounced. He's going to come when nobody's expecting. He's going to come, but nobody uh, indicates right? he's coming. Although there are signs that he is soon to come, the exact date, the exact time, no one knows. Jesus says only the Father actually knows. So those are the things that we know. And what we know about the return of Jesus needs to influence how we live Today, I don't know about you, but knowing these facts and these realities directly from Jesus himself actually gives me peace. You know, the wars that's happening around, the famine that's happening around, uh, the persecution reminds me, tells me, hey, this is actually normal. I don't need to fight it. Yes, I, I need to pray for the preservation of life. I need to pray that more will come to know Jesus, but I don't need to be afraid about these things happening. Why? Because Jesus predicted it. He said that these are the signs that my return will be soon. So how do we respond aside from these things, you know, to be aware of it? First of all, we should not panic. That's what he said, right? Don't panic. The reason why I'm telling you these things is so that you would be informed, right? Information is power. Have you heard of that word before, right? To be informed is to make an adequate decision. If you are not informed, you will not know how to decide the situations around you, right? The fact that we were informed about this virus, how we could be infected by it, helped us know how to prepare for it, right? The, the way that we're able to prepare for the storm here in Metro Manila that came through in Luzon, uh, we heard in the news that it was coming. So what do you do? We prepare, right? We got our flashlights ready just in case the electricity goes out. Uh, we got food ready, although we've been doing that for the past two months because of ECQ, right? We were prepared. We got ready. We got the buckets ready just in case the roof leaks, right? The towels and all that we need to do. To be informed is to know what to do. So Jesus is saying, the reason why I'm telling you this so that you won't panic, you'll be informed. If there are things you don't know today and it's causing you panic, can I encourage you to go to the Word? Because Jesus has already said things in his word about our future that we can take hold of today that will give us assurance for our present situation. But unless we know that, unless we're informed about those things that Jesus has already said, it's no wonder we're going to panic. We're not going to have peace in our lives. So don't panic because Jesus already knows and he has already responded to it. Secondly, we need to be ready always. He said, be alert. Be watchful. 
How can we be ready? You know, the best way for us to be spiritually ready is to come to faith to Jesus. When, it, when we're talking about the return of Jesus, the best way to prepare is to come to him, to put our faith and trust in him. He said, you know, the only way to the Father is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through me. So when we put our full trust in Jesus, we're prepared, right? All we need to do is to trust him. It is by grace that you've been saved. Through faith, not by your works, not by our good deeds, so that none of us can boast and say, it's me that got myself into heaven. No, so that no one can boast. It is all by the grace of God, through the faith, the trust that we have in Jesus Christ, that we are saved today. We have eternal spiritual salvation. That is how we are prepared. Now, if you already made that decision, hey, that's it, man. Your ticket is bought. You know, just need to persevere through whatever strife and season that comes. Why? Because he says uh, those who endure to the end will, will be saved. There are going to be challenges. It's not a walk in the park. It's not a bed of roses. When we follow Jesus, that was very clear. He told the disciples then, it echoes to us today, right? They're going to be hating you because of me, and some of you will be killed. In fact, many of those first century disciples were martyred because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Today in the 21st century, it continues to happen. So we shouldn't be surprised if because of our faith, people start to hate us. Jesus said that's going to happen. That's part of the indication, right, of my soon return. So let's be ready always. Keep on running. Keep on running. What do we say about keep on running? Just because we know that Jesus is returning and all of these signs are possibly pointing to that does not mean that we're to lock ourselves in a room or go to a mountain in a cave somewhere, uh, stock up, right? Because Jesus is coming soon and I'm just going to wait here until he comes. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to talk to anybody else. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to sit and wait until he comes. No, there is actually some things that we still need to do today. He said, until this good news uh, goes to all the nations, then the end will come. Guess who's going to be telling that good news? Is it going to be Jesus? No, physically he's no longer here. You know who has that responsibility? It's you and me. It's those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ. Remember his command in Matthew 28? Again, Matthew wrote it down. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. He was talking to his followers. That's you. That's me who have put our faith in Jesus Christ. So we're not just supposed to sit down. We're supposed to go and make disciples of all nations. We're supposed to preach the gospel to all creature. And then the end, it says there, will come. So we need to keep running. We need to keep moving. We need to get busy in kingdom work, not just sitting. And I'm looking forward to the time when the ECQ will be lifted and there will be freedom of movement, not just in Luzon, but around the world. But despite these things, do you know why we keep doing what we do? Because we're obeying what Jesus said. We continue to preach the gospel, whether it is through technology or through physical face-to-face -face encounters. Because we believe as we do this, it will actually expedite the return of Christ. Nobody knows the exact date, but he did say, until the good news is preached to all nations, then the end will come. So we're going to get busy. Just like many other churches like us, our belief is the gospel needs to go everywhere towards everyone, regardless of nationality, uh, social status, or location. That's our firm belief. And finally, because of what we know, we are to put our hope in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is somebody that we can be certain of. The only reason why I believe what I believe is because Jesus said it. And who is Jesus to me? I really believe that he is the son of God because there is no one in all of human history who has ever predicted his death and resurrection and actually did it. Jesus is the only one who did that. And for me, that is a sign of divinity, divine power and ability. And because of that, I put my faith and trust in him. And so whatever he says, I'm going to trust. Whatever he says, I am going to believe. So today, my hope is in Jesus. 
Yes, there's a pandemic going on. Yes, there are wars. Yes, there are earthquakes and, and famines and all kinds of natural disasters taking place. But you know why we shouldn't fear? Why we shouldn't be anxious about all these things? Because Jesus already knew this was going to happen. He told his disciples so that they would be prepared. We have this in scripture so that we would be prepared and would know and respond in a way that he desires. And that is from a place of peace and assurance that our future is in the hands of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are secure in Him. Whether it is in life or in death, nothing can pluck us out of His hands. Nothing can take us out of the hand of our Savior as we continue to walk in faith and trust in Him today. How is this affecting your life today? If it is causing you to live more in anxiety hey maybe you need to draw closer to the lord and in his presence maybe it's time for you to come in and to find out other things that he talks about about the future about the present so that you could experience his peace because that is what he came to do what we know and don't know about jesus return will influence and does influence how we live today how is it influencing your life? This understanding. If you don't know Jesus, maybe it's time for you to find out more about him. Let's just join Pastor Sarah right now as we worship. Take a few moments just to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us at this time and at this moment. watching this stream right now and you're not certain about your future you may be fearful about what's going on around you the pandemic and maybe just uncertain about your own life God is present and all he wants you to know is that his future is in his hands and if you trust him today that future can be secured so if that's you, would you join with me in this prayer? Make it as if it's your own personal prayer right now, inviting him into your life. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love for me. I thank you that even my future you have already secured when you came, lived a perfect sinless life, died on the cross, paid for my sins. It should have been me there. But Lord, out of your love and your grace, you took it upon yourself. You resurrected never to die again. Lord, today, I want to put my faith and trust in you as Savior of my life. Would you forgive me of all my sin? Would you come in and be my Lord and my Master beginning today? I receive you now. I accept you now. Come and lead me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you made that prayer for the first time today or you rededicated your life, would you let us know? All we want to do is to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. Send us a message right here on this stream or send us an email at prayer at icschurch.com we would love just to send information to you on how you can walk uh, with the lord in this journey thank you so much everyone for joining us today again we look forward to helping you grow as you walk with the lord Keep, continue trusting in him and hold on to his promises our future is secure in him as we walk faithfully following him every day god bless you Praise God for the wonderful message by our senior pastor, Pastor Chad. 
If you have been touched and you want to know Jesus more, please visit and message us at our website, ICS.church or at FB and YouTube, ICS Church. So please don't forget to like and share our page and website as well. So for reminders, we have lots of activities throughout the week. We have a noontime prayer every Monday to Friday, 12 o'clock noon until 12.30. And we also have Wednesday night live. That's every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. And we also have weekend celebrations live streaming from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We also have Kids Jam every uh, Sunday, that's 9.30, uh, live stream until the afternoon. So you can visit our website so that you will be reminded of all those schedules. So hope to see you. But before you go, we also prepared discussion questions for you to reflect with your family. And I hope the Spirit of God will continue to move in your life and in your family. God bless you.